What's up everybody? It's Justin at SNK Greenhouse. We just got our fall shipment of conifers in and I'm so excited to give you some ideas and inspiration on these unique evergreens. Let's jump in. First one on the list is Camiciparus new condensus uh, strict weeping. This is a weeping Alaskan cedar that has a very narrow form. So the standard ones that you see are going to get maybe 20, 25 feet tall, 15 foot spread. But this strict weeping version honestly only gets like a couple feet wide, but still gets the height. So it makes an incredible specimen or accent plant year round green needles. And I just love this one. Well, it sure has been a while since we got these in. This is Picea abies acricona. Picea abies is a Norway spruce. And this acricona is worth growing for so many reasons. First of all, in the spring, these cones are cherry red. There's hardly anything like it. You do have, of course, the evergreen weeping foliage, but I like this Norway because it doesn't get 40 feet tall like a standard Norway. This is gonna be more like a 12 foot tall, eight foot wide specimen. I just love the irregular branching and this is a true standout when they get some size on them. Up next, we have a compressed juniper. Um, I really, I love this one. So, so many times a week I get asked, what's a tree that will only grow, you know, five, six foot tall, not too wide, something that will stay nice and compact, won't get overgrown, maybe something I could put on the corner of my foundation off the house maybe, or maybe on either side of the steps, or what's a small growing tree I can put in a container? This compressed juniper is awesome. So in 10 years, it's only gonna be three or four foot tall. It only puts two to four inches of growth on a year. It's a stunning, tightly shaped evergreen that you should never have to prune. And as long as you have some well draining soil, some part to full sun, this is a great little evergreen. Well, I have so much to say about this tree. This is Picea orientalis firefly. It kind of looks like its cousin Skylands, but this is very dwarf and compact. It only ever gets about six foot tall, three foot wide. So this is excellent for coming off a little bit of your foundation of your home. If you want a smaller tree, you can also grow this in containers, but I love how it grows very dense. It has evergreen gold foliage, and in the springtime, you're gonna learn why it's called Firefly because the new growth is bright, bright gold and it gets peppered with it. And it just has this really cool effect. If you remember our tour with Bruce Duncan, he has one of these in his front yard and it's the tree that everybody talks about. Truly beautiful uh, specimen that's slow growing. I think everyone should have one of these in their yard. <laughs> I, ooh, it's pretty stiff. This is Pinus Thunderhead. And if you know me, we're gonna go take a look at my full grown or mostly mature thunderhead in my yard in just a second. Pinus thunderhead is a Japanese black pine that has very irregular shaped branching. It kind of grows out wide, but maybe 10 foot tall. If you have an area where you need a specimen to really fill up some space that you want some evergreen foliage, this is hard to beat. It also has these beautiful candles that come out six to eight inches long in the springtime. It puts on a stunning show. Let's go look at mine. This is the best looking specimen I have in my yard. This is the tree that everybody talks about when they come over. They wanna know, what is that? And yes, it's a thunderhead pine. Again, this thing has gotten huge in just seven or eight years. I think I planted it for maybe a three foot specimen. Now it's probably over 12 feet and it just has so much character and adds an elegance to my yard that you can't quite mimic with any other specimen. Up next, we have a conifer that I'm very passionate about. I even planted it at our entrance right in front of the sign. And I'm gonna show that to you so you can know what a mature specimen looks like. This is Snow Sprite and it's a Deodor cedar that has a texture and color unlike no other. It's almost white. But really, I guess it's a, it's a light green color. Uh, the one at our sign's already about 10 or 12 foot, so that's pretty mature. You can expect these to grow only six to eight foot if it's in more shade, but I recommend placing this one in a spot where it at least gets six hours. This has year round silvery needles, and let's just go look at the one at the sign because I don't think you're gonna believe how good this thing looks. 
So as you notice, this thing has a very strong central leader and it develops as the tree gets more mature. That's why in the smaller one, you didn't see one. But I actually planted this about seven years ago from a three gallon, like the one I showed you earlier. And look how tall and great it has done. I love that it's here at our entrance. And when cars pull in, they get to see this beautiful specimen unlike no other. Up next, we have a dwarf conifer with a big personality. This is Pinus heldrechia uh, banderica, and it's a type of Bosnian pine. It's very, very slow growing, only get about three to five inches of growth per year. Stays very short and compact. I love the short, stiff green needles, the dense form. Kind of grows into a slow, mounding pyramidal shape, and will probably only ever get three or four foot tall, making it perfect for small spaces in the landscape or a container. Here we have another Pisea abies or Norway spruce. It's called Tollymore. And it's the first time we've ever had it at the nursery, but I love it for its dense, uh, compact form. Eventually it will get 10 or 12 foot tall, uh, but it'll take a while to get there because it's only gonna put on three to five inches of growth per year. Um, I love how just thick and full it is as it grows it'll keep that uh fullness to it and what's not to enjoy about something that's going to stay pretty small and compact have year-round dark green needles and some beautiful cones in the spring mixing things up on the next one we have an eastern white pine this is called pinus strobus louie and just notice the gold color to this one yeah, at the winter time, it even gets more gold and turns more green in the spring and summer. This one's a little bit faster growing, 10 to 12 inches of growth per year. Will eventually in our zone reach around 15 foot tall, maybe six to eight foot wide. And I love the Eastern white pines because their needles are so soft, you know, unlike the Bosnians or the Japanese black pines, much softer, uh, longer needles. And I just love this one because I mean, where else are you gonna get a gold pine? If you've been watching this channel for a while now, you'll know that I love Cami Cypress. What we have here is a gold Hinoki Cypress and it's called Goldilocks. It has this lemony fan-like foliage, year round uh, color. It's gonna get maybe 15 feet in our zone. It's a fairly fast grower. If you remember our garden tour with Bruce Duncan, he has one of these and it is absolutely gorgeous. It's one we talk about every time. It's put on a, quite a bit of growth since he's had it. And I just, I love this one. Uh, golden Hinokis are great in part to full sun. Just make sure they're in well draining soil and they will give you some enjoyment for years to come in the landscape. I love Morgan Arborvitae. This is one of my favorites because well, for a tree, it's hard to find one that's gonna stay small and compact. Again, this one's only gonna get maybe four foot tall, three foot wide. It's got this circular, soft foliage, upright habit. Um, as it matures, it will get slightly more pyramidal, but this is a great container shrub, great in the landscape. And that golden foliage is sure to brighten things up. I am so happy to have this one back in stock. This is another Hinoki Cypress and it's called Confucius. This is an upright, irregular habit, um, Hinoki Cypress. It's got this beautiful fan-like foliage, more gold on the exterior, uh, more uh, dark green on the interior. And gosh, when this thing gets some uh, maturity to it, the central leader will take off and it just gives this irregular branching. And it's just a very beautiful uh, talking piece that you should highly consider to your landscape if you need a specimen. And while we're on the subject of golden Hinokis, let me show you another one that is similar to Confucius, but the difference is it's got a smaller growth habit. This one will only ever probably get about eight foot tall, three to four foot wide, uh, very slow growing. Um, also very pyramidal and irregular shaped and Goodness gracious, when this thing gets some size to it, it is beautiful. It will add a stunning and dramatic uh, look to a small space in your garden. You've probably seen dwarf Alberta spruces, uh, but have you seen the dwarf Alberta spruce called John's Dilly? This is a very, very slow growing dwarf Alberta spruce, only ever getting about three foot tall. Three inches of growth per year is all this one's gonna put on. Dark green foliage, 
year round. This is an excellent container plant. Uh, a lot of our customers here at S and K love to put these in the center of containers and then maybe plant some annuals around it. But it would also look good in the landscape if you have a small space or garden. This is such a neat looking arbor body. This one is called Frankie Boy and it mimics the look of like a grass, but it's actually an, a, a dwarf evergreen conifer. And uh, it'll only ever get maybe four or five foot tall, a few foot wide. Again, on our uh, tour with Bruce Duncan, uh, he has one of these pretty mature in his landscape. And it really does add a very striking uh, specimen to your garden. Uh, also great for containers. This is a very shallow rooted arborvitae. So feel free to throw it in a, a small garden, rock garden, container, and enjoy evergreen foliage all through the winter, spring, summer, and fall. Wow, wow, wow. I love Japanese umbrella pines. This one is called Green Star, and they call it that because it has the appearance of green stars all over it. Out of all the umbrella pines, uh, this is one of the more slower growing compact forms. So yes, it would go great in a container, uh, great for a small garden or landscape, evergreen foliage. And what I love about umbrella pines is their needles. There's nothing quite like it. Uh, the texture and feel is very rubbery. And if you want something very unique to stand out in your yard, this is what you should get. And while we're on the subject of umbrella pines, we've got a Joe Cozy in stock and I love this one so much. I planted it in my landscape. So I have this one uh, in the front of my house uh, because it's it does get some size to it, but not as huge as a standard umbrella pine. Joe Cozy, you can expect to get 12 to 15 foot in our zone. Um, and I say our zone because we are in Shelby, North Carolina zone 7B and things, you know, mostly conifers don't grow quite as fast as they do, uh, say somewhere like Oregon where they're getting multiple flushes of growth a year. We're usually only getting one. So that's why I keep referring to it as um, not as fast in our zone or not as big in our zone. Um, I, again, Joe Cozy is going to have beautiful dark green rubbery needles and a conical habit uh, more narrow form than the standard and there's not much not to love about this one up next we have a dwarf colorado blue spruce called sester's dwarf and this one is special if you have a small garden or an area maybe by your home you don't need a tree that gets too big well good news this one only gets about six foot tall three foot wide it grows very dense. Notice how thick and full uh, the branching is. Only grows about three to six inches per year. It's great for containers because it is shallow rooted. And as long as you have part to full sun, you're good to go. And over here we have a couple more Bosnian pines and these are called Irish Bell. I love Irish Bell. Gets about six to eight foot tall, three to four foot wide, um, even wider sometimes. I, I have seen them kind of grow fat, uh, but I love how dense they are. Dark green needles. And for a small pyramidal compact tree, this thing is outstanding. And this special tree full of character is Pisea pungens pendula. This is a weeping Colorado blue spruce. As you can see, it's been trained to grow straight up, but you can take the central leader and train it to come back down or grow out or you can keep it trained up. It is a slow grower, but my, my, if you like weeping specimens, I think you gotta have one of these in your landscape. Now, if you happen to be in the South and you wanna grow a spruce that is very, very hardy, Picea orientalis is one of the toughest spruces for the South. Of course, there's a couple other good varieties too we'll talk about in a moment. But this is Picea orientalis gaudi. It sort of looks like the Skylands orientalis, but except for it's dark green. And it has these very graceful uh, pendulous branches. This one's gonna get about 25 foot tall, probably 10 to 15 foot wide. And this makes an excellent striking specimen. Let's walk on back to one of my favorite redwoods. This is called Amber Glow. And the reason I love this one is it resists summer burn. And it also keeps this gold foliage, this gold feathery foliage. It has a very soft texture. Amber Glow is gonna get somewhere between 20, 25 foot tall, 10 to 15 foot wide. 
so you can prune it i have seen where people prune the bottom branches to make a nice little canopy up on top or you can just let it grow full in its full form but this has got to be one of the best conifer redwood deciduous type trees for the south if you love weeping conifers check out picea abies froberg froberg has tons of character and personality when this thing gets a little size to it it just looks awesome train it how you may straight up weeping over i love the the fullness uh the dark green needles it's just a really cool specimen if you want something a little bit different and something with some personality and i promised you we'd talk about more spruces that could grow in this area or in the south rather this is a serbian spruce uh, Picea omarica pendula bruns i believe and what's cool about this one is it stays very narrow and if you take uh let's see you know they've got it trained up with some bamboo right now but you can remove that and once you do this top leader just takes on a life of its own it, it might grow this way it might grow up tall it might grow horizontally for a while but overall you end up with a really irregular shaped weeping conifer and if you see these at full maturity these look so awesome and not to mention they grow quite good here in the south so while we're on the subject of serbian spruces this is picea omarica gotelli weeping and this is more of a full-size tree it does have some graceful pendulous branches but also it's bicolor because it has a silvery green needle to it uh, this one is moderate growing it's probably going to get about 25 feet uh 20 25 feet in our area and maybe 8 to 10 foot wide but what a dramatic and stately specimen this is well folks there you go this concludes the conifer tour hey if you're local to the area there is a link down in the description click on that and sign up for our conifer notification list so that you'll be the first to know when our shipments come in like this and until next time, become a plant person. <laughs>